My name is Anthony Upward, and I'm a sustainability business architect with Edward James Consulting. I'm also the co-founder of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group at the Ontario College of Art and Design University's Strategic Innovation Lab. Recently, I completed a three-year project to create a better tool to design better businesses. This tool is known as the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas and is described in our other videos. In this video, I wanted to share with you an important aspect of my research. What is strong sustainability and why is it an important idea if we want to create better businesses? Like all our videos, the link to view and download the slides I'm using, including all the speaker's notes and all the references, is shown below the video. So I hate to start such a practically orientated topic with such an existential question, but why are we here? And as a, pra as a practical bunch of business people, we often think that such questions are of little importance. But we do recognize that there's something good and special about what we as a species have managed to create for ourselves in the world today. And we freely acknowledge we'd rather like all the good stuff to continue and all the bad stuff to be improved over time. So actually, we're all interested in this thing called sustainability. But let's not forget that sustainable is an adjective or an adverb. We really ought to be specific about what we mean when we're talking about sustainability in business. What is it exactly that we want to sustain in our businesses? And who will benefit? And how much is it going to cost? And how long do we want to keep doing it for? And how are we going to measure it? And then we have another problem. The verb to sustain has some strong connotations of keeping things the same as they are now. But nature isn't like that. A river, for example, is never the same, even moment to moment, let alone over long periods of time when its course can change quite dramatically. And there's another wrinkle. What we want to sustain is a choice that we make. So it must be based on what we value. And two things are certain about our values. Every, everyone's values are different, sometimes not by much, but sometimes by quite a lot. And everyone's values change over time, quite often quite quickly. So back to the example of the river. Not only is the river changing all the time, but the person watching from the bank is also changing. So what I came to realize, as I hope you can appreciate, when we start to talk about sustainability in business, the inconvenient truth is it's not going to be simple. To sustain means keep doing the same things over and over again, whereas in the world that we live in, it's always changing, and we are always changing in it. I'm not going to apologize for this reality. The world is a complex place, and pretending it isn't doesn't seem like a smart approach. In fact, denying this important reality is highly risky behavior, particularly in business. If you want to sustain something, your lifestyle, your business, your society, you have to come up with answers that consider your understanding of how nature works, your own personal values, and of course, your current practical situation. How would you answer these questions for your business? As you reflect, it's worth bearing in mind the commonly accepted response, at least in the democracies of the global north. What we want to sustain is the maximization of wealth creation so we can afford all the things that the public wants. Education, roads, public transit, healthcare, and various types of insurance, unemployment, social security, and pensions. From my own research, I concluded that we frequently behave as if wealth creation is the end goal. We correctly recognize that our chosen economic system, wealth is required in order to create the public good, but by putting wealth creation first, we often forget why we wanted that wealth in the first place. So as I was reviewing all the social and natural science literature about sustainability, I needed to figure out my answers to these questions to guide my own research into business model design and sustainability. How should I define a sane, sustainable business and a sustainable society? Note, I'm sharing this with you, not because I'm trying to convince you that I'm right. I just want to be straightforward so you understand where I'm coming from. You will see from my other videos, when you use the tool that I developed to design your business, it's your answer to these questions that count, not mine. So what was my personal answer to these questions? I concluded that we needed a new collective goal. John Ehrenfeld, a recently retired MIT scholar, has brilliantly and inspiringly suggested that what we should aspire to sustain is the possibility that human and other life will flourish on this planet forever. What do I like about this, uh, this definition of sustainability? What I like is that it actually answers the questions we talked about a moment ago. It includes the what. It's about the possibility of sustaining flourishing. It's about how good we can be. It's not about mere survival. Next, it includes whom. It includes all humans and other life, so it's very inclusive. Third, it includes how long. It's forever. This is not a short-term objective. And fourth, while it doesn't directly talk about costs, it does start to indicate that there are going to be some things related to costs that are going to be hard to measure economically. So what's the natural and social science about sustainability that I found that supports this definition? The first big piece of evidence is the ecological economic, economists' definition of sustainability, which they categorize as weak or strong. 
To be clear, the difference between weak or strong isn't a question of good or bad. The question I ask myself is which approach is more or less likely to create the possibility for flourishing? Okay, so what are weak and strong sustainability? Most neoclassical economists and the politicians they advise assume that human and ingenuity alone will enable us to have an, a sustainable society. For example, weak sustainability is the definition implicit in the now famous 1987 Brundtland Commission report for the United Nations. In that report, they define sustainability as development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future to meet their needs. Ecological economists disagree with this. They suggest that there are some parts of nature that we will never be able to replace. For example, it does not appear that we have any possibility of replacing the large stocks of natural capital, such as clean water, fertile soil, and certain climatic conditions that are required for photosynthesis that produces the food that we need to survive. Another way of thinking about this is that there are two possibilities for having a sustainable society. Weak sustainability recommends that we should live off the interest from and draw down on the principle of our natural capital, as long as we replace that natural capital with a stock of manufactured capital of the same value. Whereas strong sustainability recommends that we just live off the interest generated from natural capital and not draw down on the principle. From my review of all the work of the ecological economists, the natural and social science that they depend on, my conclusion was that strong sustainability was the less risky option if what we want to sustain is the possibility that human and other life will flourish forever. The second piece of evidence that supports Aaron Phil's definition of sustainability is the work of the natural and social scientists that are part of the natural step. The Natural Step is a science-based NGO with offices globally and supported by a global program of academic research. The Natural Step defines a sustainable society in terms of a set of boundary conditions, three of which relate to natural capital and one to all the human-related capitals, intellectual, manufactured, social and financial. If we stay within these boundary conditions, in our families, businesses and societies, we have the possibility for human and other life to flourish. The Natural Step suggests that in a sustainable society, nature is not subject to systematically increasing concentrations of substances extracted from the Earth's crust, concentrations of substances produced by society, and nor is nature subject to degradation by physical means, such as cutting down whole forests. And then they go on to suggest that in that society, people must not be subject to conditions that systematically undermine their capacity to meet their needs for personal well-being, influence, learning and growth, equity and meaning. So having looked at sustainability from the macroeconomic, social and planetary scales, the next question I ask myself is, so what does all this look like for business? How should a business define success if it wants to contribute to a sustainable society where the possibility for flourishing exists? In other words, what does a business need to be to be truly better? In short, what is a strongly sustainable business? Recently, working with Dr. Bob Willard and others from the Natural Step around the world, we've come up with this definition of a better, strongly sustainable business. A strongly sustainable business creates positive environmental, social and economic value. It does this throughout its value chain and network, so not just the financial economy, but the whole of society and the broader environment. And by doing this, it creates the possibility for human and other life to flourish on this planet forever. If a better, strongly sustainable business were to operate forever, it would not only do no harm, it would do well by doing good. So what does acting according to such a definition mean? Primarily it means that to be better, businesses must recognize the true context for their operation. First, unlike businesses who only seek to maximize monetary profit, people in better businesses recognize that the context for business isn't just financial. They understand that the economy, the financial system, is something created by society, and that society has far broader concerns than simply money. Societies care about the well-being of people, and seek to help everyone achieve their potential. But the economy and society aren't the only two contexts for business. People in better businesses also understand that society is entirely dependent upon the environment. Without clean air, water and healthy soil, society would go bankrupt and we would all be out of business. So a better business has a business model that recognizes that its success is dependent on creating positive value in all these contexts, the economy, society and the environment, for all firms in its value network. So a better business focuses on doing good environmentally, socially, and economically for all its stakeholders, and is, in doing so is more likely to be able to do well economically for itself. But hang on, what do, why does doing good mean that better businesses are able to do well? First, better businesses are able to do a better job at managing risk. Businesses that solely focus on making money 
and who don't recognize their true contexts are very surprised when they're impacted by events that arise from outside those contexts. Things like climate change, water shortages, income inequality, and other mega forces now starting to impact firms worldwide. Ultimately, only focusing on doing well will have unintended consequences that will ultimately impact profits. Second, business, better businesses do a better job of understanding and exploiting the opportunities that are arising because of these same mega forces. Finally, because they do a better job of managing risk and exploiting new opportunities, better businesses are also more resilient. They're more likely to survive and flourish in the long term. In other words, better businesses are simply better. They are fitter for the increasingly uncertain future than businesses that believe profit maximization is their only concern. But how do you efficiently and effectively design a better business that reliably creates flourishing? After surveying the existing business design tools, I realized that these are only focused in designing profitable businesses, ignoring all the factors that lead to unintended consequences that we're all becoming increasingly familiar with. None of the existing tools help business people systematically identify the risks and opportunities of being a better business. So recognizing this problem with the existing business design tools, in 2010, I went back to university full-time to do an interdisciplinary master's degree to create a better tool to help people design better, strongly sustainable businesses. I chose the highly customizable program in environmental studies and business offered by York University's Faculty of Environmental Studies and Schulich School of Business. One day in 2012, I met the folks from the Ontario College of Art and Design University's Strategic Innovation Lab, the S-Lab. Some of them had helped Alex Osterwalder develop what is currently the most popular profit-first business model design tool, the Business Model Canvas, and had helped fund his very popular book, Business Model Generation. The people in the S-Lab were inspired by the progress I had already started to make towards a better tool to create better businesses. So in 2012, we created the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group, and we decided we should focus on creating a toolkit to help new and existing small and medium businesses move to better, more sustainable business models and we decided my new tool would be the center of that toolkit. Finally, a few months back, and after nearly three years of work, and with a lot of help from a lot of people, we reached a major milestone. I successfully defended my thesis and graduated. So what is this better tool to design better businesses? In my three years of research, I went all the way back to Alex Osterwalder's groundbreaking 2004 PhD, where he defined an ontology for profitable businesses. Then I used all the natural and social science about strong sustainability and about how to design how to design businesses that do good and do well to extend the original PhD to create an ontology for strongly sustainable business. But like Alex Ostervolda, I knew I needed to simplify to make a tool that was easy to use without losing any of the rich possibilities for designing better businesses that I'd learned about. So again, following Ostervolda's lead, I used the ontology to power a new, easy-to-use visual design tool to help design better businesses, the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas. The Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas asks 14 questions that, if you answer well, significantly increase the likelihood of creating a strongly sustainable business model. To learn more about strongly sustainable business model design and the new tool, the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas, you can watch our other videos. So what are the next steps to bring the better, strongly sustainable business model canvas to the world to help create more better businesses? There are three things that I'd like to share. First, my thesis, which contains the canvas, is licensed under a Creative Commons license but this has a commercial restriction. So if you want to start using the Canvas today, you need to join our first Explorers program. It's just a simple mutual NDA and sharing agreement to sign because what we want to encourage as many people as possible to start using the Canvas. There's no cost involved. Next, you can join us. We're launching a crowdfunded collaborative project to create the toolkit to design better businesses. The project will then publish a book that explains the toolkit, including the new Canvas, the known good answers to the 14 questions the Canvas asks, and the steps to use the Canvas effectively. The core team of the book now consists of an international group of 13 co-authors, and of course we're using the Strongly Sustainable Canvas to design the business model for the project and the business we plan to launch to further develop the toolkit to include an app, versions for specific industries, and for classroom use, and so forth. The details of the crowdfunding are now being planned, but we already can say that we'll be seeking both individuals and organizations to back the project. As one of several incentives, our backers will also get immediate commercial rights to use the new canvas and have input into the content of the book. We're hoping to publish in 2015, and when we do, the final version of the canvas will be released under a Creative Commons license without a commercial restriction, so everybody will be able to use it. Finally, if you'd like to connect, share, and learn from the other people involved in our project, creating better tools to design better businesses, we have both a LinkedIn group and a Facebook page to help with this, so we hope to see you there soon. 
I hope you found this introduction to the Better, Strongly, Sustainable Business Model Canvas useful, and I hope you want to stay in touch with our work as we bring these better tools to the world, perhaps even get involved yourself. All the links to connect with our project are shown on this slide, and below the video there's a link to download the slides, which have all the speakers' notes and references on them. Thank you.